Hello and welcome to the Ohio review, folks. So Ohio, amazing battleship. Amazing battleship. Amazing. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. I agree with every community contributor that if you're going to do the research bureau, Ohio should be your first battleship. Now, let's pretty much compare her to what to the Americans. So quite so without military contributor flag, you're looking at 50% to credits, 105 to ship XP, 115 for commander XP, and then 150 to your ship XP or free XP. Now, armor wise, okay, armor wise, this is a Montana hull. So 32 bow, 409 armor belt. 38 millimeter armor belt, 38 deck, and 32 aft plating. Okay, so let's look at Montana. 32, 409, 38, 38, and 32. So exact hull. Survivability is basically the same for both ships. So no difference in survivability at 96,300. And a 37% torpedo reduction, exactly the same on both ships. Now, the real main difference is er, is in the artillery area. Ohio gets 8, 4, 57. So now, that overmatches 30 and 27 millimeter plating. So, another ship it overmatches. So, let's say you're going against, like, Broadside like Des Moines here or Salem's Salem and Des Moines same hall Okay, you can basically overmatch the Salem and Des Moines everywhere So if you're facing ships like these you're gonna punch right through this armor There's no armor when for Des Moines or Salem against these kind of caliber shells So any ship that has that kind of caliber you're gonna go right through it if it has 32 millimeter So let's bring up some more Marseille. So let's go. Let's go bring it up to Marseille. Okay, you can still match the Marseille. Let's say you don't hit the bow. Let's say you miss the bow. And French armor is wacky. So let's say you don't sit it, Ellen. You're still gonna pin the hell out of that. You're still gonna pin the hell out of everything you face. So if you're not getting sit it out, you're getting massive pin damage. Because remember, this is a. It is basically a, a thunderer. In terms of gun caliber so you're still gonna do great damage now artillery range is a little bit less than Montana so Montana has 23.3 Ohio is 21.7 so about a kilometer and a half not a huge difference now secondaries is another one so let's do look at look at the secondaries now, I do have the flag and everything, and I put the module on there, so I'll go up to 9 kilometer secondaries. Now, you can fully spec into the secondaries and just wreck things, but look at the armor pit on those secondaries. They're only 21 millimeters, so you need at least IFHE. So, let's go to... Uh, yeah, I can't really do that, unfortunately. Actually, yeah, I can, so... Yeah, so you so the secondaries don't do much, but if you want them for DDs, because most DDs still have 19 millimeter armor, you can still pin the DDs and it at least deters them. That's why I do it is I have some deterrent against DDs. AA, again nothing real special. You can repel some carriers, or at least hold your own against them for a while. But if they want to really concentrate their attack on you, um, they're still gonna kill you. So basically for AA, you get 40 single mount or, or lichens, uh, 10 quad mount bofers, well, 16 8 inch, 5 inch guns, and well, the normal 10 and 110, 127 millimeter guns, normal destroyer guns, so not much. Then we look at Montana. It's basically like you're cutting the AA almost in half. But for some odd reason, 
they still have the same AA rating, but in terms of AA, just power, I truly believe Ohio has the advantage. Now, maneuverability-wise, um, Montana does 30 knots, Ohio does 29, or 28, sorry. Rudder shift, now I don't run rudder shift module, but it goes down to 14 point, uh, it goes down to like 14 to 15 seconds with, with the rudder mod on Ohio. Now, the reason I don't run it on Montana is because I have the legendary, or no, the concealment, sorry. The reason the concealment, but, you know, for a Montana, it's 12.2. So you do have a faster re rudder shift on Montana, surprisingly. But the but as far as concealment goes, the concealment's basically the same. You're not missing much. But the huge and major, major, major difference is in these guns. So let's look again at the guns. Last look at the guns, then we'll get into the replay and the captain build. Oh, and the modules and everything. So it's 32 second, 33 second turret traverse or 180 on Montana. And then we go to Ohio, 24 seconds. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big difference. Now for modules, I go main armaments one, damage control one and two, secondary battery mod two, concealment, and then always artillery prodding room two, because that is solely for American battleships, and you need that little module. It makes such a huge difference. Now with the full, you know, spec and everything. And running, you know, Foxtrot and India Delta. The reload time on these heels is down to 37 seconds and have an action time of 30 seconds. But you get five of them. And you get a spotter plane. Seven, four spotter plane charges. So that makes up for the slight uh, range difference. So it's not much. Now, for my captain build, I do run Halsey. Since it is a premium ship, basically. I do run Gun Feeder. Grease the Gears. Brisk, Adrenaline Rush, Emergency Repair Specialist, Emergency Repair Expert, Concealment, and Fire Prevention because you want to be tanky. And since these are enhanced heals, enhanced cooldowns, you want to be able to tank to go into the fight and have that ability to have that ability to, to heal back as much damage as possible and still be able to dish out the damage and keep fighting. Now let's get into the replay, and I will show you how Ohio does it. Welcome to the replay version, folks. So, oh, yeah. So welcome to Ohio's replay. So right off the bat, you know, we've got a pretty good team. We've got me, Duncan, Amagi, Key, and Holt, Plymouth, Anasio, Hipper, Summers, Holland, Holland, Groningen. So really great DD lineup. So really great. And then we've got, you know, a radar cruiser. We've got two radar cruisers and a decent amount of battle. Now you right see the brisk kicks off immediately. So I have the extra speed to get into position at right around, you know, 30 some knots. So I can get into that position. And I already know where I'm going. I'm going to back up. The key, the Summers, because I know the Summers, because I have to back up the Summers. He is the key to holding down this whole side, and I know I have to back up the key. So, I already know where I'm going. But she is just a beautiful ship to play. Absolutely beautiful. And I take, it, and I take a really aggressive stance right off the bat. There was only one player on that team that really worried me, and that was uh, their tier 10 battleship, uh, Mecklenburg, who was a 5D player. So that's the only battleship I have to worry about, is the Mecklenburg. He's the only one I'm really scared of. That's why you see me taking this position, so I have an escape route to get away if he shows up on this flank. If he shows up on this flank, it's going to be a lot harder. So he's the only one I'm really scared of, is the Mecklenburg. Everything else I can kill. And our Summers is going into the cap. Our Holland is going to the middle. Usually that's kind of gutsy, but I'm glad that Holland did do it. 
And you see up north at sea, they have Holland, Plymouth, Groningen, all those really good ships going up there. So I don't have to worry. Look at that dispersion, beautiful. And Mogami just turns into the shells. Boom. Mogami gone, two citadels, first blood and devastating strike. 35,000 damage. And right now I see the Sylvester Soryu's, so I'm like, okay. I stop so I can get into the position. And I know there's the Marseille. Okay, he's the other one that I'm kind of worried about. And I know, okay, it's Titan. And I see on the map the Mecklenburg's gone north, so there is no threat to me no more. I can kill this Marseille. And the Z is kind of there, so it's like, I'm not really worried about the Z. But again, the dispersion is just beautiful. Again, 11,000. Not bad. And I know some people would say, oh, you don't, you want to blow your minimap as far as you can. And you want to pay attention to that. Now, see, he is, that Marseille is just engine boosting and turning away. I'm thinking spot him, spot him, spot him. Fire another, and someone hits him real good. I think that was either the key or the Duncan. Now, I over, under lead that. But again, an, another... 10,000 damage. Torpedoes and I take a torp and thinking, this is gonna hurt. But since it's a Z44, I'm not really as worried. And then there's just the Zyton, which I'm not, because the Zyton's more scared of me than I am of him. Their Soryuz is really the only one that can really hurt. And I'm glad our Holland's in the middle, because he can keep that Marseille spotted. One shell. Problem solved, sir. I can see 5,000 damage. It's not bad. No, that Marseille is at 33,000. You know, like, see, I'm in a really good position. I'm not worried. I do shoot the Marseille. The. I'm thinking, okay, that may not hit. That may not do anything. Teammate, I need and, I, support. and I get a Citadel. Another 20,000 damage. And I ask the Holland to basically spot. He says, we'll go, we'll do. And the Marseille shoots, even though we should have stayed dark. Now, I'd have reloaded just a little bit faster. I could have got him. But the Marseille is... The only thing that can really HE Citadel me and or HE me and kill me with his AP and everything is basically no Torpedoes threat to me. Direct front. And yeah, the Torpedoes Z is deployed. shooting torps at me. And I'm like, eh. And I'm like, push A. Push A. There's no reason we can't push. They're holding C really well. They basically locked down that whole cap against 3D. Now, I'm not firing. Don't let the flood. It's just a flood. Now, broadside. Soryuz. And for some reason, I just cannot hit this guy. You know, the shells are basically right on it. I just was not getting lucky on that Soryuz. Now, the Soryuz is literally the only thing I'm worried about. And my team is responding to me there. They're pushing in. And that Z is in my Hydra range, or in my Problem secondary solved, range here. So I switched to him. And our Holland's here, he's coming down from the south. Torpedoes, our Summers is shooting, and our Torpedoes Holland deployed. is now shooting. So the Z is gonna go down. And I'm glad our Holland was a great, that Holland was a great player. He really, he took the middle cap and then came down the top. Great teamwork on his part. Again, this, and our Holland Matt Fritzy picks up that. I just was not getting lucky on this. You know, Soyuz. I wasn't. I just wasn't. And because he's the only thing I have to worry about. The Marseilles. I'm not worried about him. I just was not getting lucky. Now, 
Well, he does hit my citadel and does about 24,000. I'm like, ow. That kind of hurt. That actually kind of hurt. Now the Mercedes goes down. And I'm thinking, this Soyuz is trapped. Against a hipper, a key, and a Duncan shooting them. He has to aim. He can't angle against everything. But my reload's down to 25 seconds. I can out speed him in his in his reload. And I hit him for another 20, 1,000. I'm like thinking, how do you like getting hit, huh? Except I can actually tank the shells. I still got three heals left. And then I switch back to the Mecklenburg. But I'm always keeping my eye on that Soyuz. Because I am still slightly broadside to it. And again, there you can see in the top, they're finally starting to push C. They're still finally starting to push C. And I get about 18,000 on that Zeiten. Now, our Helen does go down. I'm unfortunate. I wanted to get this, you know, summer for the Soyuz down, but it's whatever. I mean, we basically, and I'm like, GG, there's no way they can come back from this. I mean, they've got an Amagi, the Mecklenburg. I mean, they did a phenomenal job, excellent job holding down the north. Excellent job holding the north down. We lost three ships. I mean, and they're not bad ships. I mean, they held that north and really dissed out the damage. And I just over, under overled that. But now they've got basically like three almost full health battleships basically charging into B now. And our Anasio picks up the Mecklenburg, Mr. 5D. The only one that I was really worried about. Is gone. But you know, it's a very respectable match. For the amount of shells I hit, I'm at 141,000. It's not bad. We Make that 141,000. So I'm in a very, you know, decent spot. So I can afford to tank more damage. And I'm like, I'm not really worried. The Duncan's here, he has a super heal, the Keel Key's here, the Hipper, the Summer, the Plymouth's come south. They literally have to charge into us now. There's nothing they can do. They've lost at this point. With almost a 900 point lead, and a loss of three ships, it was slightly one-sided from the beginning, but a million damage tanked, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, when one of your ships gets hard to tech, hard deleted at the beginning you know it's it's unsettling and I say I'm detected and the Duncan says he's detected same so I already know where the DD is and I know the Garen's there so it's either the Garen or the Holland and I'm glad I turned Torpedoes, dead yep. ahead. and there's the torps I six cents because I knew it would happen and I just looked at the damage and I already know those torps Torpedoes, that are coming ahead are the Holland. So I already know the Holland's there. I'm not worried. We just need one more kill and he's gone. Shots out on the Baltimore. And you can see other shells coming in and I pick up the kill. Victory. Very easy victory and very nice match.